JC, Ron Strong, born and raised in Chicago, uh, South Side. Was uh, grew up on 26th Street, uh, 29th in uh, California, exactly. You know, back then the Kings weren't what they were; they were something else. You know, they started as a movement. I um, I actually started as a mule. Somebody hired me as a mule. And they approached you in Chicago? Yeah. I uh, had already like a little name for myself. Uh, people knew that I was pretty loyal, pretty crazy to do whatever. And they approached me and said, hey, you want to make some money? And I was like, what are we talking about? And they were like, 5,000. And what did you have to bring? And I didn't know, but I was like, 5,000, shit, like, let's do this. Like, this is like 1994. Yeah. So, you know, if I went to Mexico the first time. I, I'm not dumb, I'm pretty, you know, so I started peeping the game and, and uh, talking to the main guy. What city did you go to? Apacingan. Where, how far is that? Or That's where is deep that? in Mexico in the jungle. Oh. Yeah, so, you know. Um, oh, so, so you get on a plane in Chicago? No, I drove all the way to, to, to Mexico in a car. And and it's a you? Nissan 300Z. Yeah. I get there, so the first time I went. Were you scared? Not really, man. I mean, shit, I had already done everything in the, under the sun, so like driving was a piece of cake. You know, uh, we go over there, they check me into a hotel and like the person didn't want me to like meet the guy down there. Didn't, they were trying to like just keep me like in the hotel, don't leave, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, man, these motherfuckers got me twisted, man. I was like, something's up, like, so. I left the hotel, I went to go hang out at a strip club down there, and um, I guess they were looking for me. Finally, one of the guy's workers found me, and he started talking to me, and we just sat there bullshitting. I have a little, I guess I have a gift. People take, take a tendency to like me, uh, you know, and uh, he's like, you know what, I'm gonna introduce you to, uh, you know, the guy. And uh, he took me over, introduced me. He was surprised how young I was. Uh, made it back with the car. The second time around, he made it to where they paid me more. So now I went up what, to... What, what, I mean, this was a long time ago. It was, this is, what, 25 years ago. What did you take the first time? What was put in your car? Weed. Oh, weed. How yeah. much do you think it was? I think it was like, I want to say about 80 pounds. Oh, so not really that big of a deal, but it's almost all profit because... Probably the weed cost them, what, 50 bucks a pound? Probably about 20. And then when it, when you got to Chicago, were you, you just gave it to somebody or you were responsible to sell it or? No, I actually just turned in the car. Ah, so, so they would have sold the pounds for maybe 800 bucks or something. That's what they were going for back then, 800. So think about it, $20 for 800, that's pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah, it's all profit. <laughs> you know, so they, and, and they were sending like six. So 60 grand they make on the load, they give you five grand, it costs them $2,000, nothing. It's all yeah, profit. All but they profit. Move. So, so for people to understand that markup is so big, if you see on the news that 10,000 pounds, 1,000 kilos got taken, that just means right behind it another 1,000 went. Exactly. The markup's so big it doesn't matter. They were, they, were, they were sending up to six, seven cars, so think about it, I mean. Every day, all the time. Yeah. You know, um, so you get to Chicago, you just take the car to an address. Yep, just leave it parked there. They pick it up, and that's it. And I get my money. Easiest money you ever made. Ever made. So then, how does it grow from there, and how do you end up in jail? Well, the thing is that uh, uh, the the guy said, you know, make sure that you pay him more this time. So I got ten thousand on my second one, and I'm like, all right. So, you know, what if, what if, I can make more? So, on one of my trips. I, uh, I, was, I got a little greedy. I was like, I'm not taking it. I called it in. I was like, I'm not driving it. The car broke down. I'm going to leave it here. I was already in Oklahoma. And uh, they were like, well, fix it, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, nah, man, it's too much. You guys don't even pay me enough. They were like, we'll give you 15. Just make sure it gets to Chicago. I was like, all right, done deal. It's there. So I knew they were making money. You know, and uh, I started getting greedy, man. I was like, let me, I would get back and I would be like, have another car ready for me just to leave. As soon as I get there, I'm touching down, get, have another one ready. And I did, 
a couple back to back like that. How what? many total trips you think you made before you? Probably made? about ten. Ten. Okay. So you made a quick seventy grand or something. Yeah. In what two months? Yep. So you know. At seventeen. At seventeen, got greedy, man, and I think that's what always gets you at the end is the greed. Got so caught. What? Give us the details of. Went back. Went back and. Um, the permits that they issue you at the border says the date that you, the, enter Mexico. that you enter Mexico. And they looked at the date and they're like, how the fuck did you just enter and you're already going back? You're picking something up. And I was like, well, there was a family emergency. You know, I was all cooked out. I was like. So you're getting sloppy. Yeah, it's getting sloppy. Before every other trip, I would make sure that I would cross over at the busiest time at the border. You know, when everybody's crossing to work, I would make sure that I would stay at least seven to 14 days. I always made sure I did all the small details. Who told, now, were you initially taught those tricks by the people in yeah. Mexico? Yeah. So, when you interacted with those people down there, when you were following their instructions, looking back now as an adult, was it pretty, were they, they obviously were organized and knew a certain way to do things. Did you see police corruption? Um, did it seem like they were controlling things or were they just some dudes down there sending work? Like how sophisticated were they? I mean, I, I think there was a lot of control, man, because I mean, it was a big operation. You know, you don't, they can't be just regular people. I mean, there was, there was too much traffic. So, and I mean, that town where I was going to was pretty much run by drug lords. And they were using the small mule system of just having yeah. flood the border with tons of stuff. Yeah, I small mean, low, it was, it was before low. all the war started, man. It was when all the families were working together, everybody was making money. It was before all the bad stuff started happening. So Mexico was probably at that time, Mexico was safer than Chicago. Yep. Yep. So that was actually a vacation for you. Yep. It was, it, was, it was actually pretty nice to go down there, man. So, you know, and once I, I started getting really close with them, every time I went down there, it was like out to eat, out to the strip clubs. They would show me a good time, you know, and they, they showed me a lot of love. When I got caught, they, they took care of me. So, okay, so tell us, take us to that day. You're, you're getting to the U.S. border. You've been doing cocaine. I actually got stopped right before I got to the, I was pretty far from the border still. They had a, a army a checkpoint. checkpoint and he looked at the dates and something was off. I was going back too, too soon. And um, he asked me, he's like, you know, you got something in the car? And I was like, nope. And I was kind of cocky about it because I was coked out. I was, I was getting sloppy, you know, and uh, um, He's like, well, we're going to put the car on the ramp. I was like, do what you got to do. He put the car on the ramp, dropped the gas tank. You could see the cut. They started beating the shit out of me because I was down there in the hole with them. You know, I'll never forget. He hit me so hard with the rifle in my stomach. I, I vomited. vomited. And, uh, you know, they arrested me. And in my head, I still thought I was going to be okay, you know. You what know, was in, was it like 100 pounds of weed or something? Yeah. So, you know, um, in my head, I'm like, ah, it's only weed, you know, it's nothing, blah, blah, blah. Well, little to my, you know, <laughs> what I knew in Mexico for your first offense or whatever it is, any kind of drug case, it's 10 years minimum. For smuggling? Any drug. Oh. Even if you get caught with an ounce of weed, it's 10 years. So, you know, uh, they threw me in the jail. I remember I seen, seen a lawyer or whatever. It, it was really like through a gate, man. Like fucking crim the system over there is like really fucked up. Oh, yeah. And all I know is they gave me 10 years. Oh, you got 10 years? <laughs> yeah. Did the people you were working with try to help you or not really? Not really, man. Were, would they have been capable of? Because you were pretty far away from their zone at that I, point. I, I think... Uh, I think um, you're disposable, man, when you're, when you're doing that, man. Because there's, there's a lot of people in line. Now, just, just so people understand how the drug game really works, let's just say you had wanted to tell 
you probably didn't even really know who those people, you just knew a name. You couldn't have really gave any information on them if you wanted to. You probably just knew a first name and. I mean, I, I if I, I guess you could say if I would have went that route, yeah, I, I could have because but, I, I knew I knew everybody. But the thing is, is that like I was in my, uh, I call it my gangster prime, like, you know, see no evil, hear no evil, you speak know, no speak evil. no evil. And I took the ten years like a G man. They started sending me money a month later. Oh, they were the yeah. the people you worked with. So they kind of were seeing where your head was at and yeah. then they took care of you. Yeah, they what's, sent me. What's Mexican jail like? Oh shit, man. It's fucking jail. It's uh, it's not like uh, American jail, so I'll tell you that much. It's bad. And um, What state were you in or what jail? Uh, San Luis Potosi. Um, a lot of violence, a lot of drugs. What was uh, the first day like in there? The first day I was kind of lost, man. You know, I walked in. They were like, just find somewhere to stay. and. Of course, you there's know, no the, sign. there's no sign. The Mexicans see you. You're an American. They see money signs. You know, they start. Some of them try to fuck with you. Some of them, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, I was always a big guy or uh, no, I was I was pretty, pretty small back You're then. 17. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was pretty small, right, man. Yeah. But um, uh, the second day is when I got stabbed. Uh, <laughs> The second day I was walking around and I had some brand new Jordans on and the dude was like, let me get them Jordans. And I was like, take them, bitch. And he stabbed me and I was like, all right, you can have them. <laughs> I was like, here you go. <laughs> and then what go. happened? You know, I, I got taken to the infirmary. Uh, it was pretty bad. My lung was about to collapse. He had got me with a, an ice pick in the back. What was the medical treatment like? So like, well, you know, the, the doctor uh, put one of those uh, suction uh, things in my lung and, you know, I, I didn't realize it was actually a knife or an ice pick because I just felt like he punched me, you know what I mean? But it wasn't until I was on the floor that I started to feel it. So um, they took my shoes. Um, I had a lot of American clothes, a lot of Georgian stuff, so everybody wanted it. Um, that's all they took that day, the shoes. I went to the infirmary. Uh, I was approached by the main guy that ran the prison, Donato, he's, he's, he passed away now, but uh, he approached me in the infirmary. Now, when you say ran the prison, you mean the inmate that ran the prison? Yeah, so he was the big dog in there. Um, he always looked at Americans as good salesmen. He, he had a whole American team on his team. In the jail? Yeah, or? in the jail. Okay. So he approached me, he's like, hey, so, um, you know, you can come and live with me in Unit 8. Uh, it's a, the cleanest unit here. It's where all the big dogs lived at. It was really nice. Clean, music. It's like Five Star Hotel. Uh, he's like, but you need to take care of business before you need to take care of this guy that did this to you to send a, a message. And I was like, all right. You know, and you know, as long as I had been in the, in, the, in the game on the streets, it's nothing to shoot a dude. You know, you're far away. You shoot him, you run. That's it. Stabbing somebody up close and personal is a lot different, a lot different. So, you know, I was scared, man. I was scared. I didn't know how I was going to do it, how I was going to take it, you know. And, and um, you know, uh, I remember I didn't, I didn't sleep that whole night. And, you know, I, I had to take care of business, man. I had to survive in there. And um, after that, I went to go live over there in that unit and, uh, you know, uh, he took care of me after that. I mean, I had a pretty much an open account at the store, at the grocery store. I had an open account for drugs, you think weed, he pills. Had any, any, oh, I'm sorry, with what? Weed, pills, whatever I wanted. I had a, pretty much a credit card. They would give me a piece of paper and they would just write how much I would take every day. Of what kind of pills? Uh, downers, uppers, sideways, uppers, you name it, man. And this Everything. was coming from the jail or from the in, but Oh, from, from the inmate. But, but it was known what was going yeah. on. Inmates running the asylum. Yep. So, you know, those were, I always tell people, those were the fastest four years of my life because I didn't tell time. I couldn't tell time. I was too fucked up all the time. So when the American consul came to get me, I didn't realize that four years had passed by. Yeah. So all I remember is like little things that came up in the news. I remember when they killed Biggie, they said it in Spanish. They killed the local rapper, blah, blah, blah. And 
like when the American Council got me and they were like, hey, it's time to go. You better not try and run. I was like, motherfuckers, I've been waiting for you to come and get me. You know, I, 